Hello, this is David. Spaghetti Cabanero, which is going to be a lot different than you might imagine. First of all, there's no cream in it, which I think is a more recent addition. But really, this could be called spaghetti with bacon and egg sauce, because that's basically what it is. So I'm going to slowly cook some bacon in a little bit of olive oil or vegetable oil on a medium-low heat. Traditionally, what's used is something called guanciale, which is a cured pork cheek bacon type product. Or you can use pancetta, or you can use bacon, but you will take a lot of heat for that. Those aren't smoked. I actually prefer the unsmoked flavor of the pancetta, so if you can find pancetta or ideally guanciale, use that. We're gonna cook the guanciale until it's brown. Not super crisp the way you would like normal bacon, but brown, okay? Throughout this video, I'm gonna give you several tips that will make your cabanera spectacular and separate you from the crowd. Tip, use guanciale for authenticity. For a truly authentic carbonara, guanciale is the preferred choice of meat. Guanciale, made from pork jowl, offers a richer flavor and softer texture compared to pancetta, which is made from pork belly. Though pancetta can be used as a substitute, guanciale's high fat, as you can see in the video, to meat ratio contributes significantly to the dish's depth of flavor. Now that the guanciale has been fully rendered, I'm going to remove half of the fat. We don't want too much fat, but we do want some of it to be left in the pan. The most likely origin of cabanara is from Rome around 1944, influenced by American supplies of bacon and eggs post-World War II. I like to use 10% salt per liter, so that's 10 grams of Atlantic sea salt into a liter of boiling water. I use the kettle to get ahead of the game instead of waiting for the pot to heat up. Once we have it boiling, I then put in a measured quantity of spaghettoni. It's basically a thicker form of spaghetti. After about 10 minutes, it's ready to go. Here's a tip. Incorporate Parmesan with eggs early. Adding Parmesan cheese to the eggs at the start of the recipe is crucial. This ensures that the distinctive salty flavor of the cheese infuses throughout the dish, enhancing its richness and overall taste. I'm using a combination of Parmigiano Reggiano and Pecorino Romano. Adding reserved guanciale fat to the cheese in Cabanera enhances flavor, improves texture, and helps bind the sauce to the pasta. Properly combining ingredients. The technique for combining the ingredients is critical for achieving the creamy consistency characteristic of a great Cabanera, an authentic Cabanera. After cooking the pasta to just beyond al dente, mix well-beaten egg yolks with grated pecorino and black pepper. Incorporate a bit of hot pasta water in this mixture to help it combine smoothly. You'll notice I don't drain my pasta. I go straight from the pot into the frying pan. That's how I'm grabbing the pasta water. When mixing the eggs and cheese with the pasta, it's important to work quickly and use the residual heat to create a smooth, rich sauce without curdling your eggs. For a beautiful presentation, grate some Thank of you. your Parmesan Reggiano on top of the dish just before serving. Looking at this while editing it, I can see the cleanest. The, I should have wiped down the side of the bowl, but you know what? I just, I was in a hurry. I just wanted to eat this. I just wanted to mix it up and get it in my mouth. And my God, it was absolutely fantastic. Look at the pan in the background. Oh man, it looks so messy. But this is a delicious dish. I thoroughly recommend you do it. Go for it.